Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. It's been a long time since we've said goodbye to the Harry Potter movie franchise, but its legacy lives on. Emma Watson, Daniel Radcliffe, and Rupert Grint grew up with their characters, but the cast wasn't allowed to let loose. Stop, stop, stop. They had to follow certain rules in order to not be Expelliarmus right out of there. Let's take a look. You may think that as fans of the books would have already known what was going to happen, there wasn't really a risk of spoilers. However, the Harry Potter movies reached an entirely new audience, often inspiring viewers to pick up the books. Once the movies proved popular, it was down to the cast and crew to keep their mouths shut about upcoming plots. Everything from shooting locations to twists and turns had to be kept completely under wraps. That can be difficult when reporters try and grill you about the storylines and press interviews, but that's show business. Pretty much every movie that's ever been or will be requires a little bit of teasing. After all, if we knew the entire plot, we'd never go and see it in theaters, now would we? The magical world of Harry Potter is no different. As time moved on, J.K. Rowling was still writing the book series, so would often confide in cast members about what was going to happen next. There must have been an overwhelming amount of trust between all parties involved. That's a huge risk to take with a multi-million dollar baby. When the movies first started filming, the main cast members were young and innocent. Daniel Radcliffe was plucked from obscurity at the tender age of 11 to don Harry's famous glasses. Rupert Grint and Emma Watson were also in grade school. At that point in their lives, all they had to worry about was whether they had enough pocket money. However, as the film series moved on, the cast grew up. Kids have a nasty habit of doing that. For the last few years of shooting, the main three characters were of legal drinking age and enjoyed the odd night out. There was a strict call for professionalism, but unfortunately, it didn't always go to plan. Like any typical young man, Radcliffe sometimes turned up for work looking worse for wear. Imagine doing those action scenes when you're sporting one heck of a hangover. No thanks. It's not unusual for actors to get panned for turning up pie-eyed, but you can't exactly uncast Harry Potter after a decade now, can ya? Luckily for Daniel, he would have had to have done something akin to Voldemort's level of evil to get his butt kicked off the set. You just can't have Harry Potter without Harry Potter. When the movies first started out, no one knew who Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, or Emma Watson were. They were just some kids that nobody gave a monkey's behind about. Fast forward to now and their household names. Okay, Emma Watson is arguably the most successful out of the three, but they all made an impression on audiences the world over. There's no denying that. However, the franchise did pack some serious star power too. Michael Gambon, Maggie Smith, Ray Fine, Emma Thompson, Gary Oldman, and Alan Rickman all had important parts to play. Not only are they physically older than the main three, but they've got impressive resumes. It goes without saying that there would have been a pecking order on set. The older cast helped the younger ones immensely, but asked for respect in return. You don't just rock up to a set and diss Alan Rickman for goodness sake. You say, yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir. The franchise wouldn't have lasted as long as it did without the relationship between the older and younger cast. It was part of the well-oiled machine that made serious bank for the studio. There's a lot that goes into being a child actor. It's not all sunshine and roses and fat checks. It's hard work, no social life, and long hours. Ryan Reynolds famously said that he doesn't understand why people want their kids to be actors. Instead, they could just skip the middlemen and check them straight into rehab. Thankfully, our favorite trio seems to have stayed on the straight and narrow, but it wasn't easy. As a rule, the kids had to study and keep on top of their homework when they were shooting. Otherwise, they may have found themselves out on the cold cobbles of Diagon Alley jobless. Tutors were often on set, so when the youngsters had a break between filming, they were studying. That's an awful lot of work for kids to take on, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, right? Emma Watson went on to get a degree from Brown University in English Literature, but it took her longer than most. Instead of four years, it took Watson five. Why? Her acting schedule was so demanding that she had to take two full semesters off. At least she could use her already sizable fortune to pay the fees and isn't up to her eyeballs in debt like the rest of us. Ah, relationships in Hollywood. Aren't they wonderful? There's nothing quite like seeing two co-stars hooking up in real life. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt did it and made a good go of it until it spectacularly crumbled. There weren't any strict rules about dating on the HP set, but it was discouraged. 
You can't exactly blame the director for wanting to avoid any teen drama while trying to make a masterpiece. There were a lot of rumors that Emma Watson hooked up with Daniel or Rupert, but it wasn't meant to be. Radcliffe called the idea incestuous. After filming ended, Bonnie Wright, aka Ginny Weasley, dated Jamie Campbell Bauer, who played young Grindelwald. The pair ended up separating, but it was nice while it lasted. For the most part, relationships between cast members were successfully avoided. Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart could have taken a leaf out of their book, now couldn't they? It would have saved a whole lot of pain for Twilight fans who had to watch that whole thing play out in the public eye. Considering how young the cast of Harry Potter was, they pretty much grew up like siblings, which vetoed any romantic feelings right off the bat. It's only natural that the cast and crew would have wanted to take a memento or two after filming ended. You don't work on a project for a decade and walk away empty-handed. However, there were strict rules concerning this. What's the harm in taking a robe or a wand, you ask? Well, these are part of Warner Bros. history, but they would also fetch a pretty penny if sold. It's not uncommon for crew members to squirrel something away only to pop it up on eBay later. If discovered, it can greatly damage your reputation in the business and even lead to lawsuits. It's best just to keep your hands where everyone can see them to avoid any future trouble. Of course, there are the odd exceptions to the rule. Most of the cast has something to remember their time by, but it was all done by the book and okayed by the big bosses. Apparently, the set was not dismantled by the cast and crew either, but by another company. This was probably to avoid anything going missing. No one was getting out of there with a the free mandrake route. These movies weren't Quentin Tarantino works. There was no promiscuity, no close-to-the-knuckle jokes. It was simply good, clean, wizarding fun. That being said, it was important for the cast to uphold that and not be caught out doing anything they shouldn't. The series was mainly directed at younger audiences, so any whiff of a scandal could have seriously hurt the brand. Grint, Watson, and Radcliffe were all expected to be on their best behavior. Considering young actors can often go off the rails, we're looking at you, Lindsay Lohan, they did an impeccable job. There were no public scandals, no solicitous pictures, everything went as smoothly as Hedwig gliding on the wind. May she rest in peace. As for the older members of the cast, well, they were all pretty respectable anyway. No one too risque was hired, as it simply wouldn't have worked. Audiences sometimes find it hard to separate the actor from the character. The actors were under instructions to be role models and upstanding citizens. Just like with any job, the longer you've been around, the more people you know. Emma Thompson and Helena Bonham Carter have been in the acting business for decades. It's only natural that their paths have crossed before, but to say there was bad blood would have been an understatement. In the early 90s, Thompson was married to actor and director Sir Kenneth Branagh. They were the British it couple of their time, starring in several movies together and basically ruling the red carpet. That all changed when old Kenny boy met Helena on the set of 1994's Frankenstein and embarked on an affair. Thompson and Branagh divorced a year later, so it's not hard to see why things were a little strained. Producers were rightly concerned that it may be a little awkward on set between the two actresses. However, both insisted that peace had been made years ago. Professionalism is of the utmost importance on movie sets. No one wants to be worrying about who isn't talking to who when you've got Voldemort to worry about. Hermione Granger's hair is an epic battle in itself. Just like the no drinking rule, it was imperative for all cast members to be sober in every sense of the word. Drugs are a huge no-no, especially when you're young and in Hollywood. Vincent Crabb actor Jamie Waylett was let go after he was arrested for growing substances. Instead, he was replaced by another character from the books, Blaze Zabini. If you want to keep working in the industry, especially when you're still new, don't get mixed up in that sort of thing. It's just not worth it, kids. Waylett faced further legal troubles after being given the boot. In 2011, he was charged with theft after stealing from a supermarket during the London riots. Slytherin by name, Slytherin by nature. It just goes to show why these things are vetoed. One thing leads to another, and it's a slippery old slope. Luckily, the rest of the cast followed orders and didn't get mixed up in that sort of thing. Or at the very least, they didn't get caught doing it. This is more of an anecdote than a steadfast rule, but it's too good not to mention. While filming The Goblet of Fire, Rupert Grint and Matthew Lewis, aka Neville Longbottom, were in Alan Rickman's car. The two were presumably having lunch when they managed to spill a milkshake all over the interior. 
Rickman was not happy about it, so when he got a brand new BMW, he banned Grant and Lewis from going anywhere near the vehicle. That's totally understandable, given the circumstances. Respecting other people's property is the key to good working relationships. Given how expensive cars can be, nobody wants someone spilling stuff all over it. We can almost smell it through the screen. Hopefully, Grint and Lewis paid for it to be valeted at least. There wasn't a written ban or anything, but this incident probably taught everyone a solid lesson. Don't horse around when holding milkshakes in an acting icon's car. The response will be frostier than Uncle Vernon. And there you have it, Harry Potter fans. Do you think these rules are ridiculous or plain sensible? Sound off in the comments. Before you go, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big ol' thumbs up. Until next time, thanks for watching.